Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am PD Worski, the Toronto website developer formerly especially in Drupal. Um, what I'm doing now is looking at Android app development and walking you through that to develop our app called Mathlete. Now, before we jump back into where we left off, you'll notice I'm over at Toronto website developer.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I complete them. Uh, each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these, keep them free and keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support thus far. If you can't afford the $20, but you do want to help out, please just leave me a thumbs up or a comment on YouTube. I always appreciate the feedback and it's great to hear how these tutorials are helping people out. That said, why don't we jump back over to our code and just kind of a little bit ahead of ourselves here. And you'll see I had the, the class open main activity.java and where we left off was looking at this text view and then adding our text dynamically to that text view. Um, so we're going to continue with that. Uh, primarily what we're going to be looking at is in our main folder under res layout, I've got this activity underscore main.xml. And the reason why I have that file is because Android Studio created it when I set up my first class main activity. Uh, Android has a layout for each activity uh, by default when you recreate your project in Android Studio. Um, and so what this actually is, is an XML file which tells Android what to actually create in terms of uh, look and feel for our app. And so you'll see here under activity.xml, all that we have is the text view in a relative layout. Now, just as a quick sidebar, this relative layout, when you head over to, oops, when you head over to developer.android.com, you can actually check out their API guides. And you'll see here under user interface, there's layouts, and they list four specific layouts, linear, relative, list, and grid. They all um, are kind of intuitive. So the grid is exactly what you expect. Um, an actual grid of uh, views and then same as your your list view just kind of one over top of each other the relative just positions views uh, relative to each other and so you'll see this is what we're going to use and I'll show you how to work with it and then linear layout actually just does this uh, in a linear fashion so either vertically or horizontally I know this might not make sense but don't worry about it um, by the end of this tutorial you'll understand what I'm talking about so why don't we take a quick look at our app here and I'll walk you through what we're actually going to create. So this equation right here is what's called uh, a text view. And so we're going to create this and just provide a random equation. Uh, we'll do that dynamically. But for this video tutorial, we're just going to actually create this equation uh, space. This answer space is going to be an edit text view. And so this allows us to actually enter in a text uh, as an answer. And then the high score here is just going to be, again, a text view, which we're going to dynamically set, same as the current score. And so we'll walk through the equation and the answer kind of slowly. And then the last two will be kind of quicker because there's common concepts to the first one that we're going to create. Over in Android Studio, you can see I've got two tabs here. I've got design and I've got text. Um, design actually lets you look at all the different layouts, widgets, views, what, what, what have you. Um, and just kind of drag and drop them and then position them and you'll see all the properties here that you can set on the right. Um, it's really intuitive when you're doing this. Um, so I don't want to actually use the design view with you, but I actually want to code everything by hand. And so that's what we're going to do with this text tab. Uh, again, activity underscore main dot XML, extensible markup language. Uh, here we're going to create our view. And so I don't have the preview, so I'm going to click that in and you'll see here now we can actually see what we're doing as we do it. So first thing I'm going to draw your attention to relative layout. This is created by Android Studio. Um, and the interesting here thing here is if you click into padding right, padding top, padding bottom, you'll see it's referencing this at dimend. We're going to come back to this, but this is going to be a common concept that we're going to use as well. So we added this text view. I'm actually going to get rid of it. And I'm just going to show you here, if I start typing text view, uh, Android will, uh, Android Studio will autocomplete and I can enter. And then I've got this ability to choose the layout width. And so what we're going to add this as is actually match parent. And then the height is going to be wrap content. Now, what this means is the layout width is going to match the parent width uh, of the element above it. And so relative layout happens to be the parent to the text view, which is considered the child. And so when we say match parent, this width is going to be the same width as the relative layout. Now, in terms of the layout height, what we're telling it to do is just wrap the content. And so that's why this blue bar is really thin, because it's just going to wrap the text that we have. If we chose match, oops, parent, you'll see that it becomes the entire screen. And so that's not what we want. Um, now with that, to speed things up, I'm going to copy some text 
paste it and we're going to walk through it together here uh, but there will be a couple of things that we change so uh, let's enter this and let's close this guy back up okay so text alignment we've chosen it to be center and the gravity chosen it to be center and so um if we actually let me show you something here we'll just do um android what is it text is equal to uh we'll just call this equation so we can actually see what we're doing see it's in the center and if we take this out um we don't actually have any impact so we don't really need this one but here the android gravity if i take that out you'll see that we move over to the left and so we actually do need this center gravity and this is what aligns us in the middle of the entire view that we've created the text view the id uh, is a common concept to the last video tutorial it just gives it the name that we're going to reference uh, in our code when we're looking for this and so again at uh, plus id slash and then the name and i'd like to add those to the top just so that they're really visible when we're looking for things um, this text is going to come out because we're going to dynamically set this text, but we're just doing it to see what we can see. Now, in terms of the text size, I've got 40 DP listed here, and I'm actually going to wipe that out. I'm going to make this at dimen slash primary text. And what this tells Andrew to do is look in a folder uh, called dimens, rather not a folder, file at uh, dimens.xml for a tag called primary text. And so you'll see here on my project view, um, where I'm in the res folder, I'm in layout. If we look further down, you'll see that there's values. And then there's this dimens.xml file. And Android will know to look in dimens.xml. And when we open this file, you'll see we've got a resources tag and the children to that are dimens. And so you create this dimen, give it a name, and then you give it a value. And so for primary text, I've added 40 dp. So when this uh, XML gets uh, parsed and rendered by Android, it knows to replace at dimen primary text with 40 dp and the same thing can be said for this so i'm just going to copy this uh, activity vertical margin and just going to replace it here and when we go back to dimens you'll see activity vertical margin is 16 dp and that's what i want for my padding to be on the top and uh, padding if you're not aware um, you can do a quick uh, search it's based on the uh, html padding margin concept and so you'll have your element box Padding is within the box, it creates space. So you have your box and then there'll be space inside of that. Your margin is your box space outside of the margin here. Um, and so that's the difference. Uh, so I'm adding my padding so it's inside of the element itself. That's my text view. I'm gonna create my edit text, which is actually where we're going to submit the answer. And this is going to be a little bit longer. So we're gonna walk through this together. And I'm just gonna rearrange some things here. So first thing you know about, Android ID right at the top, I'm going to call this answer. The layout width, I'm going to wrap the content. The height, I'm going to wrap the content. Uh, this really doesn't matter. I could match the parent. Um, and we've got the same thing there. Uh, now, input type. What I'm doing is I'm telling Android that I only want a number to show up here. Um, so that's what it's going to be uh, provided. So when you click on this, what actually happens is it's going to give us the numeric pad. And you'll see that down here. The input type, when you click on this, is one two three four five six seven eight nine zero uh, the standard numeric pad for Android and I believe this came in in one of the later API versions so if you're working with an earlier Android API uh, this might not actually help you um, but I can't remember exactly which one just flagging that in case you are doing that uh, backwards compatibility is beyond the scope of this tutorial now the text size we're going to change this again we're going to put dimen primary text um, the minimum width uh, we don't actually need this I'm going to take this out um and there we go now the layout uh, margin top again this should be the at dimens so 16 all that we're saying is we're going to give this a margin so that there's going to be our, our first text view and then the edit text there will be some space in between there now layout below this is pretty key without this um, android will kind of overlap the actual two elements and we don't want that so this is where relative comes in we're telling android put this edit text below the add ID equation. And so that's why we need these IDs uh, because they're super helpful. Now, interestingly, if we take out layout center horizontal, this will, oh, this will not change our, our layout. It did if we had something else in there. Um, anyways, so forget that. We didn't have that uh, element in there. Pretend you like you didn't see it. Now you'll see gravity. This will be familiar from the text view above. We've got this as center new to uh, the edit text which we did not use in text view is this idea of a hint 
And so what this does is it will pre-populate the edit text with the whatever we add there, uh, which will get wiped out when we actually uh, enter something, right? So it's just um, uh, the idea of a hint, tell users what they're supposed to be doing with this, rather than just leave an empty space. And so this at string is something we haven't seen, but it's very similar to at dimens. If you look under values, there will be a strings.xml. And when you look in here, you can see resources, you'll see a tag for string. It has a name um, with whatever you're going to refer it to. It's kind of like an ID and then a value between. And the reason why you do this is so that it's easy to accommodate multilingual uh, apps. And so you can have this string, identify it as answer, and then translate that to a whole bunch of different languages. And you don't have to worry about wherever you're using the actual hard-coded value throughout your app. Now, lastly, this IME options, what this allows us to do is identify what's going to happen um, when the user uh, goes to submit their answer on the keypad. And so Android um, will identify an icon there. You know, if you're sending an email, this could be action send. Uh, we're using action done. And so when we look at our emulator, I'm just going to drag this up a little bit. On the Nexus, you'll see that this becomes a check mark to identify that you're done, you're, you're finished. And so IME options, action done. Then in our code, we're going to actually look for this uh, constant from Android action done, and we're going to uh, evaluate on that. So those are, that's the text view and the edit text. Um, I'm going to copy in two more values here. Um, and they will be very familiar to you. So I'm not going to walk through them um, with exception to edit some text here. So rather than at text size, we're going to create this as at dimen slash secondary text. And we're going to take this vertical margin. We're going to copy down to 16. We're going to move our layout up to the top here. Oops, sorry, I didn't want to do that. We're going to keep that. I thought I was moving my ID. That's already at the top. Um, and then same thing can be said down here. We're going to copy this guy to put it here. And then the padding top. Padding top is actually a bad name because I'm using the vertical margin, but whatever, we're already there. Now what I need to do is in the dimens, rather than have uh, primary, we're going to add a secondary text here. And actually, I just realized secondary text, this is going to be 20 dp. I can use padding top. So rather than at dimen, this should be padding top. This should be padding top. And did I do that anywhere else? Yes, this should be padding top. The margin is fine. And just for the sake of this, we'll add Android text, so you can see what we actually added. This will be um, high score, right? And then we can copy this guy, enter this, replace this guy, and just put current score. And then you can see what we actually did there. We got a high score, uh, low score. And so that's it for this video tutorial. Just wanted to get our actual layout set up. In the next video tutorial, what we'll do is we'll continue on with this and we'll look at dynamically adding information to these uh, views that we created so that we actually have an equation. We can let the user enter an answer and then we can update our high score and current score. Um, and we'll likely also have to add our image view, which will be the uh, check mark or X that we add when a user gets the right answer or a wrong answer. So that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, I know it was kind of dry, but it's setting up to be a little bit more interactive in the next video tutorial when we're looking at actually coding the main activity to update these text views. So uh, if this video tutorial helped you, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know how you're uh, liking this. And if there's anything specific you'd like to see, thanks very much for watching.